reinforcement. Um, basically, the, the reinforcement needs to be adequately anchored to ensure that bond stresses are transmitted to the concrete without any longitudinal cracking or spalling occurring within the section. And um, the transfer of these stresses is mainly by mechanical locking of the reinforcement um, ribs with the surrounding concrete. And that will depend on the shape of the bar, um, cover, the transverse reinforcement and any confinement from transverse pressure. Um, this figure here then just shows you the, sort of the, the, the different anchorage uh, methods that are um, given in the Eurocodes other than a straight bar. A straight bar is also a permitted anchorage method, um, obviously enough. Um, these ones here are the ones that are just given in the Eurocode. You are allowed to use other anchorage methods um, if you can justify them. I mean, you can do that through sort of testing of some sort. Um, and the Eurocodes are actually very flexible to allow um, you to try different methods of doing things. And um, it will give you a couple of recommendations of this is a way of complying with the requirements. But then it'll, if you if you can justify it by some other means, such as testing, you can then also use um, that method. So it's, it's quite good, really, from that point of view. Um, <coughs> generally speaking, um, the anchorage failures will take one of three different forms. And those forms are, are illustrated on this slide here. Um, the first of this is um, the side split failure, which is the one shown on the left-hand side over here. And basically, the side split failure um, will occur if your cover is less than the half the clear spacing between your bars. So basically, that C dimension there is um, bigger than sort of half of uh, A divided by 2, basically. And in this sort of scenario, you basically end up with a crack forming between the bars, as shown in this um, diagram here, and then the cover just sort of falling off and exposing bar to corrosion. Um, the second method of failure will occur if you've got the um, cover being um, less than the sort of A divided by 2. And in this sort of situation, you'll end up with some cracks for forming vertically from the bar down to the face of the concrete. Um, and if, if the sort of A divided by 2 is just slightly bigger than C, you'll end up with, after those vertical um, cracks start forming, you'll end up, then end up with horizontal cracks forming and then the concrete um, spalling off. Um, if you've got a situation where A divided by 2 is a lot greater than what um, the cover is, then you'll instead end up with the, these vertical cracks forming. But instead of the horizontal crack for, uh, sort of forming, you'll end up with um, sort of cracks forming at 45 degrees away from the bar and that um, piece of concrete form falling off locally and again exposing the reinforcement. And um, basically you, the, um, those sorts of failures can be controlled by providing things like transverse reinforcement or transverse pressure just to keep the cover um, onto, the, onto the section. And the Eurocodes do make an allowance for um, taking that into account and that's taken into account in your anchorage calculations and your lap length calculations as well. Um, so to actually calculate your anchorage length, um, the first thing that you have to do is calculate your ultimate bond strength, or ultimate bond stress rather. And you do that by using this the equation illustrated above there, which where you've got the bond strength is equal to 2.525 N1 times N2 times FCTD. N1 um, just relates to the qu quality of the bond condition and the position of the bar during the concrete. <coughs> and um, Basically, if you've got a bar sitting at the bottom, um, you, you then have an N1 factor of 1. And if you've got a bar sitting in the top, you've got an N1 factor of 0.7. And that's basically just to allow for the fact that the concrete in the bottom of the slab is probably better compacted than the concrete in the top of the same slab. Um, you then, 2 factor just relates to the bar size. So if you've got a big bar that's bigger than uh, sort of a 32 mil bar bigger, um, you you end up making a reduction um, to that. Um, if you've got the smaller bars, then it's just uh, N1 is just, N N2 rather, is just equal to um, 1. And um, FCTD is just the concrete design strength. And again, that's just taken from table 3.1 in the code. 
So once you've calculated your ultimate bond stress, um, you then use that to um, calculate your um, basic anchorage length. And the basic anchorage length is also shown on this slide here, and this is just dependent on um, the bar diameter, um, the stress in the bar, and ultimate bond strength. And that basically um, allows you to take into account um, if you've got a bar that's not fully stressed. And again, that's one thing that you're probably best off not really doing if you're doing a new design. Um, you're better off just assuming that it, the bar is fully stressed. But it, it, it's another sort of get out clause and if things start getting wrong and you end up with smaller anchorage lengths than you expected. <coughs> um, so once you've got your basic anchorage length, um, we then ha have um, a whole bunch of alpha factors that we use to modify what this um, anchorage length is. And the, the, these are alpha factors numbered um, alpha 1 through to alpha 5 and are dependent on various different factors. And I think probably the best way of um, sort of illustrating what they uh, are is on the next couple of slides, which are the extracts from the codes. Um, the only other thing I'm going to say to this slide is that you've also got some minimum anchorage length requirements depending on whether your bar is in tension or compression. And um, again, those are just shown on this slide here. Um, generally, to comply with those, to, or to actually have the minimum anchorage length supplying, you will have had to do a calculation where your stress in the bar is less than the sort of yield strength of the bar, so the bar isn't fully stressed. Um, so, as I said, um, we'll go on and look at the different alpha factors that you use um, to modify your basic bond strength. Uh, first of all, we've got the alpha 1 factor, and this is dependent on the shape of the bar. So if you've got a straight bar, alpha 1 is equal to 1. Um, if you've got a so bent bar, or well basically here it says other than straight, which basically means bent, um, you can then make a reduction to the alpha 1 factor. If you've got compression, you're not allowed to modify it. But if you've got tension, um, you can modify it as sort of stated in that slide there. Um, for alpha 2, um, that's dependent on the concrete cover that you've got, and um, will also depend on if you've got a straight or not straight bar. And um, again, it also depends on if you've got a compression or tension within your section. Compression, you don't get to make a reduction, but tension, um, you can potentially do so using those equations given now. Um, alpha 3 will be, be dependent on if you've got any confinement by transverse reinforcement that hasn't been welded to the main bar. Um, that basically mean, just means links or something like that containing um, the bar. And again, uh, this is dependent on if whether it's intention or compression. Um, compression, you don't get to make a reduction, but with tension, you do. Um, and alpha 4 will depend on confinement by welded transverse reinforcement. And that's basically just if you have a uh, piece of transverse reinforcement that's been welded to the um, longitudinal bars and thus um, restrains, it, restrain, restrains it. And again, you've got the reduction factors um, given that shown there. Um, the final thing is the alpha 5 factor, which is just dependent on the transverse pressure. Um, and as I said earlier, an example of that would be if you've got a bearing um, underneath a beam, and that bearing will provide um, sort of a restraint onto the sort of bar, and you can take that into account um, in your um, sort of anchorage length calculation. So that, that is what you can do. Um, generally speaking, I would not recommend that anybody actually uses any of these reduction factors. And the reason for that is that if you've got a typical structure, um, you then do a sort of calculation on all the different anchorage lengths you have. And you probably don't want lots of different anchorage lengths in different parts of the structure, because it's pretty much guaranteed that if you have sort of three different types of anchorage lengths for a, T, a B20 bar, you'll end up with a con contract that contractor picking one and going with that everywhere. And they will, they will mess it up. So it's, it's one of those things, you're better off just using the same anchorage length or lap length throughout the entire structure and using these clauses as a uh, sort of justification when things aren't done as they are, should be on, this, on the side. Um, it might be also an area that if you have a discussion with the contractor, they might want you to start applying these, and then, but you, then you have to make sure that they are actually applying it on site, because it is a very big potential error for fixing reinforcement on site. It's very easy to get it wrong if you've got lots of different anchorage lengths and lap lengths throughout the structure. It's 
the, the guys fixing the reinforcement are just going to get it wrong, basically. 